it was a very stable and easy aircraft to fly on. I enjoyed flying the Lancaster. It was receptive to controls and uh, I, I, in spite of an odd occasion where people say it was a very heavy aircraft to fly, I disagree. I think it was quite easy on the controls. I often like it to fly driving a bus as compared with a car. Driving a bus in and, and, uh, uh, and the, the, the Lancaster I think is, is in that sort of category when quite easy, quite uh, safe and uh, not cumbersome but uh, responsive. Uh, and, and, and yeah, I can't say much more than not easy to fly. I don't remember the smell very much, but I certainly remember the, the, the sound of the four Merlins, uh, a magnificent sound, which when I hear that, if I ever go to uh, East Kirkby uh, occasionally and hear them run up the Lancaster there, it gets very emotional to hear that sound of those, those Merlins. And it was just, digressing a bit, that, that that was a sound that I enjoyed when I took the flight on the Mosquito recently down from Masterton to Wellington, was listening to those two Merlins. It was an exhilarating feeling, you understand that uh, the the pilots, all the pilots on the, on the squadron um, uh, had been unable to enjoy, in, engage in low flying unless they authorised, which was very, very seldom caught martial offence if they were caught low flying. So when the directions or the instructions came that we were to engage in low flying training, uh, I think well, most of the pilots thoroughly enjoyed that, that prospect. In fact, they did enjoy the actual training that we carried out at low level. It was an exhilarating experience flying at 200, 220 miles per hour, fairly low to the ground and see objects whizzing past you. When we entered the briefing room, I think for us, for those that all the fly air crews were to take part, glanced at where the tapes were leading and the fact that it was um, ended at the dams didn't, didn't cause unduly alarm. And what did cause some concern amongst the crews was the fact that the routes to the dams read through the Ruhr Valley, the most heavily defended area in Germany. And that, uh, that caused some concern. I approach most operations with a, uh, the thoughts that, okay, um, if I'm going to cop it, so be it. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't let the fact that the, uh, the uh, targets that we were to attack were going to be dangerous, going to be heavily defended, and uh, we're going to be subject to heavy flak or even uh, night fighters. Didn't, didn't concern me. I think the con my concern on an operation was well, on the briefing of, an, uh, of the target that we had attacked was to absorb the instructions, of the, the height, the time, the, the, the route or the compass bearing and all that sort of thing. Um, I, I, don't, uh, I don't think that, the fa that, that this was, I think the fact that there was the, um, the, 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 the destruction of the dams was going to be a major effort or a major achievement if we destroyed them. Um, didn't worry me too into too much, but I think that I was, uh, and mind you, I, I was also, my, my target was the Sorpy, which was a slightly different method of attack and that sort of thing. Uh, but no, I, I had no particular feelings of worry that we weren't going to carry out the, the operation. I can always remember to this day seeing the breakers ahead of me on, and realising that uh, I'd have to gain a little bit of height to clear the sand dunes, which I did, and I was, had passed the crests of the dam of the, of the dunes and was just starting to lose a bit of height on the other side when this line of tracer uh, appeared on the port bow and uh, one, one shell hit me without any discernible effect on the, from, on the uh, flying on, on the, um, yeah, on, on the ability of the plane to carry on. And uh, uh, silence said the effect of the, of, the, of the bomb. It was just, in a, in a way, very fortunate, or unfortunate, no, very fortunate that the, the, the flag, the shell had hit 
at bet midway between the, 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 the edge of the plane and the rear gunner, and, the, and, the, and the, that otherwise it would have been much more serious. Uh, it would have been much more serious, and there were no injuries to anybody. But it did put the intercom out of system and electrical system. Well, it was a disappointing decision to have to make, but I don't think it was a tough decision. What happened, of course, was, was with the intercom being put out of action, nobody could converse with each other. And uh, I had sent my wireless operator down to uh, check on the damage, uh, for firstly to check on the, uh, whether my rear gunner was okay, and then to check on the damage caused by the flak shell and determine whether it was possible to reconnect the intercom system. In the meantime, while he was doing that, I circled in the Wadden Sea, uh, awaiting his decision. When he retired, when he came back and said no, there was no possibility of, of repairing the damage to the intercom, I made the decision to return to base purely on the, on the and there was an, I think at that stage it was a reasonable and easy decision to make because it was we were absolutely essential that we able, I was able to converse with the land with the navigator on their route if I carried on the route to the Sorpi, and secondly if we got there to uh, hear the instructions of the bomb aimer directing me of which way to fly and that sort of thing. And without those, those with with unable to do that, I think there was no alternative but to. Uh, to uh, return to base. I believe that the morale of the English people was very low at that time. The war on the land had not been going well. Uh, and I think that from an operational point of view, the attack, the breaching of the Ada and the Mona, uh, the Ada and the Mona ha had been successful. Um, and that on, on uh, and, the, and that, that, that had achieved a, a remarkable result as far as the, uh, damage to infrastructure on the Ruhr and factories and electricity uh, reticulation systems and that sort of thing. Um, and I, view, I, I, I believe from a operational point of view that was success, very successful. They'd achieved the two major primary targets they damaged the Sorby, but perhaps not as great as Barnes Wallace had anticipated. Um, but coming back to the general feeling, the effect on the British morale was really significant. And I think from that point alone, it was justified and, and can be categorised as, as successful.